Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Exploring 3D Experience Works. If you believe it, it's actually the fourth session. And, you know, if you are a subscriber of the SolidWorks uh, YouTube channel, which you all should be, um, <laughs> the, we have other live events. So, you know, Gian, maybe it's a good time for me to ask, you know, did you happen to check out that super awesome SolidWorks live session last week? Oh, the, uh, the additive manufacturing one? Yeah, that was... That was such a cool session. Like, I, I don't know if you've seen that many questions actually asked in a session that like our, our friend, Jeremy Regneris, who runs that, who runs SolidWorks Live and a lot of these live streams, he was just telling us how, how it was like incredible. Like so many people loved that session and a lot of great questions. You know, it was, uh, I think it was, it was Paul DeWeese. I might be mispronouncing his last name, but Paul was talking all about additive manufacturing, like in the field and a lot of questions were asked. Like, I, I think my favorite question asked was like, will 3D printing ever replace, uh, you know, injection molding and stuff like that, you know, our more typical uh, industrial processes. But hey, even even Paul says no. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, good news, I guess. Yeah, maybe, um, <laughs> maybe sometime down the road, but not anytime super soon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, if... If you're here again and you're joining us, uh, we thank you. But if not, I mean, you may have a question. And by the way, my name is John Martirano, Uh And next to me is Gian Khaleesi. So we're both industry process consultants currently in the Waltham office, just separated through a concrete wall because, yep, you know, beautiful COVID. beautiful Massachusetts. So, <laughs> so um, again, if you have any questions or comments, use that chat. I mean, we'll be checking in and answering questions periodically. But again, if you're new to the show, you probably have a question. And that question is, what is, what is 3D Experience Works? Yeah, what's this thing you're about to explore with us? Exactly. So, in short, really, 3D Experience Works is just a gro growing portfolio of hand-picked tools by SolidWorks to solve just about any product development challenge. So this together you see on screen is 3D Experience Works. So we can have different brands really that cover the different domains of this design process from design and engineering all the way down to sales and marketing, everything in between as you see on screen. And what does this design process look like? Well, in its simplistic form, there's a plan, a develop and release phase and we all know well that SolidWorks really does tackle that develop challenge. But if you sprinkle in all the rest of the uh, 3D Experience Works tools, they fit really nicely on this uh, on this you know um, kind of process to provide that one-stop shop of connected solutions. So if you joined us in 2020, you know well that we've been all over the map and covering all of these or at least as much as we possibly can. But today we'll be sticking to our roots and just tackling some of the browser-based CAD functionality from SolidWorks and really focusing on that develop phase. So Gian, to go into a little bit more detail, what exactly are we going to be covering? Um, yeah, I can I can cover that. But before I do, I just saw a, a comment in the chat that made me laugh. Jordan says, hey, John, you look extra smart today. I, yeah, a little <laughs> bit smarter than usual. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know, if you haven't been with us before, John didn't always have glasses, but we're trying to look smarter every day. Yeah. You know, you know a couple of years in this job and I'm already going blind. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, but yeah, today, like you said, John, we're going to focus on that browser-based CAD functionality. So a couple of couple products that we've already gotten our hands on this year, 3D Creator and for, you know, your typical parametric CAD, as well as 3D Sculptor for subdivision modeling. But new to this show, we haven't presented on 3D Sheet Metal Creator before, but today we are, and we're going to show you some of what it's like to design sheet metal components right in the browser. So we have a pretty cool data set that we've been working on for a little while, this electric winch assembly. And we're going to be using some personas again to tackle this, uh, this workflow. So today I'm going to be Debbie designer. Um, and Eric and John, you're going to be playing, uh, Eric engineer, right? Oh yeah, I am. That's right. So we each have a couple tasks and we'll actually start with Eric. Now, Eric is going to be focusing on the assembly. So we need to assemble that whole winch. So in this, you'll see, uh, you'll see Eric Engineer tackle some both bottom-up and top-down assembly functionalities and, and, and techniques, um, as well as doing some in-context mechanical part design 
So you'll see a lot of what it's like to use X design just for normal part design, but also how you can, you know, use external references and design something right in the context of your assembly so that when you change your assembly, those components update with it and you don't have to worry about manually changing things. So from there, we're going to jump over to Debbie. I'm going to be Debbie. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to show how Debbie designer designs this controller uh, using our subdivision modeling tool, uh, 3D Sculptor. And 3D Sculptor might not be new to you, it might be new to you, but last session we had Jordan Tadic come on and show us all about 3D Sculptor from, uh, it was borderline training. So if you ever wanted to get your hands on 3D Sculptor, you know, go reference that video because Jordan goes like from the absolute basics all the way up to advanced features. And it was a great session to be a part of. Uh, but in this, yeah, like I said, Debbie's going to be focusing on the industrial design side, so using subdivision modeling, and she's actually going to do this at the same time Eric is working on the assembly. So a little bit of concurrent design you'll see in there of how, how what it's like to work on the same uh, model at the same time. And then I think finally we'll have um, Eric close us out by showing some of that sheet metal uh, capabilities we were talking about. So taking this roller fair lead. He's going to design that that sheet metal frame that is uh that that is that is the roller fair lead there. And yeah, so you'll see that's where you'll get to see some of that sheet metal part design. So we have our characters. We got Debbie, that's me, and we got John as Eric. So what what's Eric up to, John? You know, what, what how does how's he starting his day here? Yeah, so Eric is actually going to be starting his day in the browser. Um, so this is a fully browser-based uh, X Design, which you know, or three D Creator, and you know he's starting the day. He sees that you know right away in this assembly that we need some components. Does it look like there's some components that are missing? I think I think there's uh, there's some something missing there. So yeah, maybe a couple gears that might help. A couple gears, right? So there's a couple different ways that Eric can go ahead and add these. One, you see, he has a separate widget of 3D space, which is where he keeps all of his data. Down below, he can insert one of the gears that way. If he wants to, he can also access that same 3D space just by searching exactly what he's looking for. And you can type in as little or as much as you want, but the more you type in you know, the more specific those search results get. And just because he typed it exactly right, you know, he only got one or two search results. So that's good. Now, Eric has the option here. He can either open it up separately or he can insert the component into the assembly, which is what he wants to do. But it's also important to note that he has the option to uh, add a couple instances if he wanted to as well. But in this case, he only needs one gear, so. That's what it'll do. Cool. So you're just throwing them out into space. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Throwing them out in there into space, which is pretty cool. You could toggle a view if he likes. There's a view cube um, for all sorts of different views. But up next, what he needs to do, well, new to the latest release of X-Design are the advanced mates. So today we're going to be taking a look at the gear mate, or it's called the gear joint in X-Design. But there's also a rack and pinion joint as well as a, a pulley joint. So there's a couple different options. Today we'll just be covering the gear joint. And all you need to do is really just select those two gears. And now he has these completely out in the middle of nowhere. He could have defined them and Xdesign would have been smart enough to realize that, you know, or recognize the, the mates that he has to add now. But it is pretty cool to also just be able to, you know, um, just start from scratch, right? Into the middle uh, uh, or have your models just in the middle kind of floating and then define where you want to place them. So it's pretty, you know, it makes sense, right? These yeah, components highlight with exactly what you're looking for. Right. Um, yeah, it works out pretty well. He can also toggle some views if he wants to add, help add some mates. In this case, he's going to define an angle mate. Um, to actuate this gear as well. So he's going to choose two planes for that. And, you know, because we did go ahead and do that for the first one, we'll just kind of fade through for the second one. And now they're all in position. 
Eric, see the moment of truth. The moment of truth. So Eric sees all three, or um, you know, all three of the different mates that he needs to put in are all in there, and he clicks the green check, and then he gives it a move, cleaning up the tree a little bit. And again, he can clean up shop by pressing that V key, which is the same thing as going down to the toolbar, um, so he can actually hide those planes once again. Yeah, so he has also a trimetric view, which is pretty cool. And then if you hit the F key, that'll focus the model into the, the center of the screen. And then he can begin designing the spool that he needs to design. So with this, we're going to do some design right in context of the assembly by creating a brand new component right inside of the assembly. So Eric's going to select insert new component and he can go ahead and name this new component. Obviously it's going to be called the spool. He can decide where he wants to place this component. And in this case, he's just going to add a couple mates to get the origin where he wants it to be essentially. And because we already know how to do that, we'll just fast forward a little bit. Uh, so you just wanted them right in between those two brackets. It looks yeah, like. we want those right in between the brackets. Now, Pay attention here, because now we're selecting external references. This is where design intent really comes into play here, because, well, if Eric selects the external references here, we now will be able to keep our spool within the confines of these two mounting brackets forever. So if we ever make any changes downstream, you know, we can um, kind of retain right. that. So it basically makes like those references sticky. So exactly. Like... It makes the references sticky. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. So now when Eric selects this, um, you know, uses one of the edges for the mounting bracket to define one of his sketch parameters, it's now going to be using that as an external reference. And it's nice. going to basically stick to that face forever. And we have the S key as an option. In this case, Eric's going to use this S key, which is our shortcut tool, to kind of trim away some of the excess material he wants. He can pull it up again if he wants. And we'll go ahead, and this time, we'll add dimensions. So, John, is that S key brand new, or? No, I think before? that might be familiar to most SolidWorks users and, and a favorite, if anything, right? <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, that's definitely my favorite feature. Absolutely. So... Eric can come down to his features tab now and notice he's just going to hit extrude. And you're like, well, why would he do that? It just looks like a block shaped L. Well, this is our super feature. So he can select extrude and just change it to a revolve later on. So when he does that, he all, all he has to do is really just click one access and you can see there, boom, he's revolved the first half of the spool. Simple, just pick an edge. Eric's going to add a couple fillets. And then he can use his buddy, the selection helper, to help him make, you know, some informed decisions about maybe what other edges he might want to select. And the best part is, if selection helper doesn't select the edge that, you know, he wants, or maybe there's one that's left out, no big deal. Eric can just add it right in there. So, John, you only made half of this, though. What, what's going on here? Yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to use the mirror plane. And we're going to mirror the other half of this component. And, you know, this all comes down to design intent again. So this is to make sure that if we ever, you know, um, we ever make any changes that the spool again will stay right in between those two brackets. So Eric can now start a sketch. Important to note, you can also start it from the toolbar or the S key. doesn't really matter. Um, but we do have this new... Featured newest latest or new to the latest release is the insert sketch uh, feature, and so, so really all this is is if you have a pre-existing sketch that you want to use, Eric knows this. He's we're just going to choose and search for um, a previous model that we've already used. In this case, um, it's called you know we'll type in skeleton, so the skeleton key lock that we created, and it's going to identify these sketches. And then Eric can choose from the top down from the list of sketches and choose the one he wants. And he can insert the sketch exactly where he wants it to be. 
Uh, so if you like already had the shaft, then there's no reason to like recreate that. Yeah, why well, would? Yeah, you wouldn't want to duplicate any efforts or anything like that. So, and again, Eric's gonna click this extrude button, right? But this time, he has the option to not only add material but cut away material. He can make it a surface if he wanted that. It's cutting through all of the geometry, and let's just take a look at what that looks like. Yeah, I'd say that pretty much satisfies it. I guess the last thing that Eric needs to do here is just apply some material. And again, we want this really strong. So we'll just choose, um, you know, 1023 uh, carbon steel there. And wouldn't you know, we've pretty much done everything that we needed to do. But how about we test out what it looks like? Yeah, like what happens if, if you need to make a change? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So what Eric's going to do is going to basically edit the sketch. And this is the base layout for the actual sheet metal component. And when he does this, he can actually just change one dimension. So he's going to change the dimension from 250, let's say, uh, I don't know, 270. And then right. watch what happens. So it should make the spool a little bigger then, right? Boom. You see that? It updates in yeah, real time. That, that was so, quick, but I, I did see it. Hey, and just for you viewing out, out there, uh, if you ever missed something, the fact that this is YouTube Live means you can actually drag the little end of the video back in time and re-watch something at any point. So that's very true. something, Or if you're just joining us, scroll back to the beginning and watch the whole thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So... I mean, Eric was able to make that change. I mean, that that ha that sketch was created so long ago. You know, this is why design intent is so important. Right. And I guess the last thing that Eric wants to do, I, I think he just wants to check in on Debbie's project on uh, see, you know, how she's doing with the um, the actual controller unit itself, where that uh, the green PCB board is off the end. So he can just double click on the power and controller assembly and. Well, he gets this message that pops up saying the component's reserved and he knows who it's reserved by. And basically this just means that he won't be able to make uh, or save any changes that he makes to the geometry. But there is good news because he can send a request um, that she actually frees up the geometry and she unreserves the geometry. Right. So that's exactly what he's gonna do. And that'll actually give Debbie Designer a notification instantaneously that uh, Eric's looking to um, work on that model. So, I mean, I think pretty much for now, Eric's work is, uh, I'd say, pretty much done. I mean, do yeah, we have any, being, any let's, questions? Let's see what Debbie's up to. But yeah, we do. I did see a couple questions. So in the beginning, we were talking about that additive manufacturing episode on SolidWorks Live from, from last Thursday, which you can go see. Uh, it's in the SolidWorks YouTube channel. Just go to videos or playlist. But just want to mention, yeah, Jeremy Regneris, who's who's the host of SolidWorks Live and who ran that session, he was just mentioning how awesome Paul was and how they actually have a special Q&A session coming out later today because there were so many questions oh, wow. that they didn't even get to. Um, Eric Betty, yeah, th hey, we love, we love seeing Eric come in here. <laughs> and it looks like he's pretty excited about some of the new things going on with uh, X-Design. And uh, it, it looks like uh, he asked if insert sketch is something that you will be able to do with uh, DXF and DWG. Well, I, I don't know, John. I haven't gotten my hands on that tool. It is one of our newer ones, but if it's not possible today, chances are it will be possible very soon because of just the rapid pace that X-Design has been growing. Oh, so, absolutely, yeah. But... Uh, other than that, hey, Dan Wagner just joined our uh, SolidWorks user group community leader. Um, great to see so many familiar faces in here. And uh, yeah, I think that we're just about good on questions so far, but let's let's see what Debbie's up to. Yeah, I'm I'm really interested to see what what Debbie's uh, what Debbie's up to. Right. So just to refresh you, um, so. Eric just sent a request to Debbie to see if uh, if she would release the reservation of the, the component that she's working on right now. So when we go back into Debbie's screen, the first thing we see show up is that notification from Eric. And uh, we can zoom in a little bit and see, um, 
if we actually wanted to go, we could check it. It'll show up in our notifications. And by clicking that notification, uh, it'll actually launch us into a separate window where we'll have the option right there to unreserve. But at this point, Debbie's still working on it. She's not ready to give it up yet. So she's actually just starting a side conversation with Eric right in the in the side panel to say, hey, Eric, I saw your request. Just still work on it and I'll message you when I'm done. So just a great way for them to keep in touch with each other throughout this this design process. And looks like Eric said that sounds good. He'll move on to something else that fair lead. So cool. Sounds good to me. You can also like messages or reply right to them. I, I, I really like that. Uh, but yeah, I think that we're, we're on the same page, Debbie and Eric. So let Debbie, let's, let's get to work now. So we're in 3D Sculptor. So like I said, if you joined us last session, you saw it. Jordan was all over the map with 3D Sculptor showing us how, how to get things started and how to use some more advanced features. But just like he showed, I'm going to start with the basics and how you can start a shape with these primitive shapes here that are almost like a digital hunk of clay. And I'm going to start with the box shape and I could, I can resize it in any of those uh, three principal directions. And I can also control the number of control loops that go around this model. And I, I like to start with less. Uh, if you can, I always say less is more with this because you can easily add more detail and control as you need to. So here's the robot. And this is the main tool that we're going to use. Um, I have manipulator there because it's it's basically the main way to manipulate the model. So you'll see it's this little triad tool and I just highlighted that the arrows there that I just highlighted in red. Now those arrows are for you to translate either the whole body or just the selected area of the model. Um, then you can also use the arcs there that I just highlighted in red. That's for rotating your selection. And then, of course, the points at the end of those arrows, those are for scaling. So think you can translate, rotate and scale all in one tool. So that covers almost like it covers a big percentage of what you would actually want to do with subdivision modeling. So I'm going to get this thing lined up, but I need it to be like right on that center plane. So if I actually select that plane, our in context toolbar shows us that we can center it on plane right here. And that in context toolbar will show up with different commands based on my selection, because that's exactly what it is. It's just in the context of whatever I'm doing. So X design or X shape are just trying to predict what my next move is going to be based on my selection. So I, that's all centered. I can do the same thing to turn on symmetry. And now whenever I make a change to one side of the model, that'll also happen on the other. So uh, another thing that I really like about this is transparency. So designing like these kind of enclosures or things where this is just going around a lot of internal components, it's nice to get a, a reference for size and, and, uh, and, and shape with, with being able to just turn down that transparency or turn up that transparency, I should say. So there's how we scale is by clicking and dragging points. And uh, there's some translation. We can move the whole body once again. And uh, maybe I'll just select these bottom edges. This is how we can rotate um, is by using those little arcs uh, in between the arrows. And that's how we can uh, get to rotate certain areas of the model. But let's move on because I, I have some things I need to do with, with to this model. And one of them, after I get the, the general size and shape of this, I want some type of protrusion on the top so that if somebody walks by this controller, I, I don't want them to like hit the controller and accidentally drop like a thousand pound piece of Whoops. equipment or something. <laughs> yeah, it probably wouldn't be too great if that happened. So I'm going to use the extrude tool to kind of add some protruding material out of this this face and now here comes a couple other ways that you can quickly change the geometry in here outside of using the robot and that's inserting loops so by clicking this after selecting that edge it's going to put a new loop perpendicular to the edge that i selected and now here's another way that we can add more control is the subdivide faces tool so subdividing these faces is just going to, I mean, quite literally what it sounds like. It's going to take this five or six faces I have or so, turn it into like 12 or however many, 
almost like an offset of the shape that I already have. So that's how we just added some more loops here. And that's looking pretty good, but maybe I don't want everything to be so soft. Like I want some sharp corners, the crease edges, it's, it's perfect. That's just what I need it for. So I'll add a couple creased edges. And the, you know, we're already getting well on the way here uh, to it, to the final product. Um, but I want to actually subdivide those faces again. And I'm gonna actually add a crease too, because I need that to be hollow in there. I need some area for my buttons. And you'll see what I mean as I push this face back. That's kind of how I'm opening up um, that area so that you know we have that space where our buttons will kind of be within. And I think a nice creased edge here will look nice as well. So, Gian, one of the things that I've noticed is your mouse has not left the graphics area like once. I mean, that's the beauty of these cloud apps or really SolidWorks. You know, I want to say the cloud apps, but that's just SolidWorks. If you use SolidWorks desktop, there's, and you know what, and you've learned a lot of these tips and tricks along the way, then you probably know there's not much reason to use toolbars or go out of the graphics area. And we're trying to replicate that with these new cloud products as well. So I'm, I'm always excited about that. Never, if I never have to touch a toolbar again, I'll be happy. <laughs> But I uh, think I'm going to keep moving on, on this one. I got a couple other things to do to this model to get this ready. So I want to fast forward uh, just a little bit to um, these robot settings. So the robot settings there, oh, whoops. Eh, we'll just take it back from here. No problem. A little bit of technical difficulties, folks, but hey, that stuff happens. And I'll tell you right now, we pre-record a lot of these demonstrations specifically so that you get to see more of what we these tools have to offer. Because if I was doing this live right now, we wouldn't get to cover like half of much, half as much of the content that we do. So John and I really think about what we want to show, and then we pre-record things and then present it to you live so that you get the most out of this hour or so worth of uh worth of content yeah. so sometimes things like that happens but uh just going back through this again and i want to show how how we have that that cavity in there now where our buttons will be and there's a couple other things to to show here So one of them is uh, I'm just going to fast forward through some of these uh, through some of the other areas of this. I'm just going to go high high pace, a little fast pace, and these robot settings. This is what I was trying to get to. Okay, so the robot settings are actually something that you can adjust. So right now it it automatically is just going to orient those arrows and arcs based on what I select, but if I only ever want to move things in the X, Y, Z direction, I can adjust that right here just by right clicking on it. So now as I, uh, as I continue here and, and make just a quick adjustment to those settings, now I can just make it X, Y, Z and only move things in and out of those planes. But there's other things we can do too. This is this is one of my favorites is that we get the question a lot like how precise really are these are these surfaces? Well, they're as precise as you want them to be. So the, I like to use the numeric inputs as much as I can. And this is something Jordan showed last week too. Had to show it again. It was it was so cool how basically I select everything I want and then instead of just pushing and pulling on an arrow, I just click on the arrow. And then I can actually type in a numeric input for how much I want to move that. So maybe five millimeters will work. And oh, maybe we'll just type in negative five. So we can go in either direction. And that's one way we can have a, a very precise um, dimension right there. Now, this is another thing that I really like that Jordan, actually, I, I got to give credit to Jordan here. He showed me how if you, that you can actually move the robot. So when you manipulate things, it's based on where the robot is. But if you move the robot, then that changes how things work. So if I wanted to rotate this face 
about kind of like the bottom edge of it, I can put the robot right there and then rotate it and kind of have that be my hinge point wow. for, for where I'm rotating. That's pretty cool. That John. is like, neat. That's it, awesome. It's, it's just easy. You know, it's, it's very easy to do. So another thing, I want to make sure all of these surfaces are coincident. So those ones that I just selected, I want it basically all to be flat. So I'm going to use the align coincident command. And you might see a little bit of a change, but it's still not completely flat. And you can see because some of it still overlaps with my buttons there, with my switches. So I can actually turn on the cage view. Turn on this cage view right here to be able to see what the surfaces actually look like, these driving surfaces. So if this is confusing to you, it's really just the points uh, that drive what your surface ends up looking like at the end. And Jordan went into this a lot in our last session. Um, so I highly recommend going and watching that session again if you haven't gotten a chance to. But just making a few cage cleanups, you know, this is the kind of like, uh, this is a very important step in the model because if the cage doesn't look right or doesn't look quite like what I want it to look like, then the surface certainly isn't going to. But if I adjust everything and, and get it to where I'm comfortable with it in the cage, then chances are it's going to look a lot better once I'm ready to actually show the surface again. So let's, let's see what that looks like now. And boom, yeah, that looks, oh, I should have done a before and after shot because this wow. is just so much smoother than it was before. And I like that it's it's got style, but it's also pretty industrial. Um, draft analysis, always one of my favorite tools to show with 3D Sculptor, and that's because it's dynamic. So I can set a draft plane and it will colorize my model with the green, yellow, red that you're, I'm sure you're familiar with from the draft analysis in SolidWorks. But with the subdivision environment, now I can change this dynamically and watch things, uh, watch the colors actually change as well. So see how that yellow just kind of disappeared. So this is great for when you're trying to define your parting line or really just prep this for injection molding. We're not gonna do too much prepping for injection molding. Um, we'll show a couple more features just to show you what else we can do by combining 3D Sculptor and 3D Creator. So I'm going to switch to X Design. <laughs> yeah, John, I'm taking a page out of Eric's book right now. Or I should say Debbie's taking a page out of Eric's yeah. book. <laughs> so Debbie's just going to add a couple parametric features. And again, I'm fast forwarding through some of the setup just to show you how we have this sub D surface. But now I'm going to take sketches. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to use geometry that's already in here to just punch a hole through part of my uh, part of my sub D body. And we can actually go hide that. Uh, let's hide that switch so that we can we can see what the hole actually looks like. And that's perfect because these kind of switches, they just kind of press fit right in there, but then they still need to be soldered onto the PCB board, um, onto the PCB, but we're not gonna touch too much on that. I do wanna do a quick mirror to get this cut to be on the other side. So the S key shortcut, is always it's always there for you um, and since i'm in the part modeling environment right now it just gives me my most common features so just like mirror and now i just mirrored that from one side to the other and that's that's looking good um, i still just want to show you a very important part of this type of industrial design approach and i'm sure a lot of you are wondering well is this shellable can i add a thickness to this model, to this design that I already have here, because a lot of times, and I've used other sub D products before, you can make a beautiful surface, but it's not always easy to actually use that if you can't do things like shell it out or apply that, that uniform thickness to it. But lucky for us, the shell, it like these X design, the parametric features are designed to work in tandem with subdivision. So we'll be able to shell this out no problem and get this thing ready to, uh, to, for injection molding. And again, there's still plenty more steps, but just to show you uh, what it looks like with a, with a quick section view. And we can see, uh, well, maybe I should use the ZX or the YZ plane. And I'll just drag this plane over so we can see the inside. And 
oh, we can just switch that direction. And now we can see our nice uniform wall thickness. And I'm sure a lot of you, uh, a lot of you engineers out there who do make injection molded products, you know that this isn't ready to, to be injection molded, but it's, a, it's the start of a nice concept for our design. And I don't know, I'm pretty happy with this. I think, I think Debbie's pretty happy with it. Uh, so happy that she might even be ready to just call it a day and you know finish her task. So we're gonna save this component and let's go over to our to-do list. Little bit of a hiccup there, folks. Sorry about that, but we were able to drag and drop our design right from the design tree into our tasks list. And now our to-do, you know, our that was our one task we had to do, so we're done for the day. But one thing we do want to make sure is that we close the loop with Eric. So Eric is still working on the assembly. So let's jump back into our conversation there and just let him know that we're all done with that uh, with that power with that uh, power sub-assembly that, that she was working on. So, hey, Eric, all done on my end. Do a quick refresh, and you'll be able to see all of my, uh, all my changes. And I'm just about done now, you know? Uh, or I sh should say Debbie is just about done now. So I think that we're, we're at a good, a good point to just stop and, and check and see if there's any questions right now. Yeah, what do we got for questions? So uh, Richie Moore asked if um, creating this same geometry will take a lot of time with 3D sketches. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, it most definitely would. So I've used SolidWorks a few times where I've tried to use 3D sketches with a bunch of splines and basically create the outline of, uh, of my part. So like the control loops you see around this sub D body, I basically tried to create those with splines and 3D sketches. And whew, that <laughs> gets time consuming and difficult. It's difficult to keep track of things. This workflow is such an improvement to doing stuff like that. Now, don't get me wrong. There, there's totally a big place for traditional surfacing tools. But especially when you're in, con in conceptual design and you want to see how this is going to work and really find the form, um, then I would, I would definitely recommend using 3D Sculptor. You, you can't beat sub D. I mean, a real-time draft analysis? I mean, come on, how can you beat that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and it looks like Eric said uh, being able to control the robot orientations is fantastic. Completely agree. And you can thank Jordan for showing that to me and showing that to you. And he also said, not bragging too much, but the cage with surface view was something I heavily lobbied for uh, with, with Rob Jost. And Rob Jost is, is uh, our R&D owner of the 3D Sculptor product. So I'm glad, Eric, you pushed for that because that, that has awesome. a lot of uses too. And it's, I mean, I, I personally like to stick with either cage or surface, but I definitely find myself in that cage with surface view. Uh, many many times throughout design um, but yeah we're getting a lot of a lot of good feedback from people it looks like it looks like most people are pretty pretty happy with uh with what we've been able to show so far hey toby toby schnar is hey, joining toby. <laughs> always great to see you too tall toby uh, i'm going to be at your session on saturday for another uh, cad competition if you don't know toby he runs a competitive cad modeling um a uh, live stream every Saturday this year. It used to be every Monday, but now it's Saturday. So definitely go check that out if you're into competitive CAD modeling. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think we're just about good on questions for now. And it looks like we can probably move on and show what I'm sure a lot of us have been waiting for is this, this sheet metal stuff. Yeah, let's see. Um, I mean, Debbie did her her job. Let's see. Eric's got to gotta finish what he started, so... Let's take a look. So Eric obviously sees the message and he does a quick refresh as she instructs. Beautiful. And you know, we you know, we're just kind of wondering here, what's this model going to look like and wow. Oh. Well, it does look very nice. Pretty cool. I think it looks she very even good. She matched so. the color with the frame. 
Yeah. Oh, matching color with the frame. Got the swatch down. Nailed it. Perfect. Looks great. Eric's so excited, and it looks like he's about to add, like, a smiley face emoji that you could totally do, uh, but I guess <laughs> nah, he's not he's, that happy. He's a professional guy. He's, he's, he's yeah. <laughs> boring. Yeah. Well, you know, Eric's got a lot of work to do, and it's primarily uh, <laughs> revolves around, you know, designing this fair lead frame. So we set up a surface that you see in the middle, uh, and this drives the position of our roller. So changing the dimensions... Uh, from that sketch of the surface will actually drive the dimensions. So which dimensions are you talking about, John? Yeah, these ones. These ones you see oh, on screen okay. here. I see. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's pretty simple. And again, this kind of goes back to that design intent that we talked about, right? Right. So it seems like this is probably, that's like a pretty crucial area. Yeah. So you definitely want to have something, uh, you know, so you can update changes at, later on. But in the meantime, you know, Eric's got some work to do. So he's right now started a sketch. I don't know if you saw, you can click on any planar face and he's using a much of the existing geometry as possible, like convert entities, um, just snapping to other entities that already exist. Oh, those one click dimensions. Oh, I know weird. those one click dimensions are, are dreamy. Um, <laughs> but what else is dreamy is that S key uh, toolbar right here. So we're in the, uh, sketch environment, so we get sketch options. So in this case, Eric's just going to trim away just like uh, like he did before, just some of the other stuff, just to go ahead and complete that contour. And what he's going to do, he's actually going to start by making a wall from this sketch, but first he needs to define the sheet metal parameters, right? Like how thick do we want it to be? Um, right. You know, the bend, the radius, bend radius, K factor, things of that nature. And that and, relief is important too. Relief is certainly important, so he's going to choose the rounded relief option. Beautiful. And, you know, it's important to note that he could change these uh, at any time, and he can quickly jump into a wall feature. And look at that. I think that looks pretty good. So what's also pretty cool is that he can click one edge, and then the in-context toolbar that we talked about that keeps coming up, well, it comes up again, and this time we can actually do a bunch of different things, and one of which is create that wall on edge feature that we're looking for. So really just with one click, we can actually take a look at what material side, flip to the material side that we want, and um, we can even, I will say, make it 65, is it? Let's see. And then we're going to basically do the same exact thing again. But this time, you've kind of already seen what that looks like. So we're kind of speeding this one up a little bit because it's it's pretty simple. Yeah. I mean, if you use SolidWorks, and there's not too much different about the sketching. Right. right exactly. There really isn't much different at all, which is exactly what you want. So he's doing the same exact thing, you know, really just getting his sketch from blue to black, meaning that it's fully defined, oh, right? I, which I is like that little angle. Eric added there. Little angle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's actually this time going to exit out and click the green check. And then he presses that S key again. And remember, because this is dynamic, it now changes. We're in the modeling environment, so we get modeling options. So we can add a wall. Too. There we go. Boom. Done. But, uh, you know, it's yeah. kind of an issue, right? Yeah, John, I don't. I, I, maybe I'm missing something, but like you have two, don't you want this to be one sheet metal component? We do. And luckily there's a feature called bend. And what we could do is we can actually just add these two walls together. It's literally as simple as it looks. You just click the two separate bodies and now they're joined into one. Oh, wow. And with our relief, relief that we set in mind, it automatically, it does it all for us. So, I mean, it's pretty amazing. Um, so but I see some sharp corners though, like. I know. Yeah, those those corners, uh, they got to go. So what's really nice about this is just as Eric did before, we can get that uh, in-context menu to pop up. And then we can also collect, uh, select the selection helper. And it shows us what that it thinks, um, you know, that those faces based on that one selection should also be selected. And as before, if it doesn't get everything, you can go ahead and, you know, select a couple more edges that you want. Define a radius and you're good to go. But uh, you might notice, Gian, that there's only one quarter of this, right? Yeah. So you, I mean, what was, do you, do you, you must have some type of plan. Like, how, how are we going to turn this into 
into yeah. an actual part now. Yeah, again, S key to keep my my mouse right in the graphics area. And I'm just going to do a sheet metal mirror. So I'm just going to mirror the entire body. And we're going to mirror it to one side. And that creates half of it, right? Okay. You know? Oh, and then just do that again. Do that again. We got the entire assembly, right? Or we Beautiful. got the entire component now mirrored. So that's 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 how you go from one quarter to the entire thing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I thought we had a lot more steps to do after that, but I, I guess not. <laughs> no, I guess the only thing left that we got to do really is just add that material, which, uh, again, we need something really strong. So, again, I could search it up top, but, again, because these are in these nice... Uh, you know, folders, I'm just going to choose my 1023 carbon sheet steel, and that'll work perfectly. Nice. So can we see like some type of flattened view or something? Absolutely. Yep. So we got the uh, flattened view. What would a sheet metal product be without a flattened view? So we could quickly toggle again in that same in context menu. And I think it looks pretty good. And then yeah. we could do the same exact thing to go back. And we're back in a trimetric view. And, and everything's looking yeah. pretty good. I'm curious though how this how this surface thing is going to work. Well, remember we promised that we were going to design this with the design intent so that everything would just update automatically and I think we'll deliver on that promise. So all he needs to do now is just edit that sketch that we talk about that drives that rectangular surface and change right. it to 135 and then boom. I mean, did you see any issues with that? I, I think it all wow. updated beautifully. Yeah. And you know what? Here's the thing. If it doesn't update as you expected automatically, we have an option called Global Refresh, which, uh, you know, is that similar to something that uh, yeah. you might be familiar with as a SolidWorks user? it might user? basically just be rebuild. That's the rebuild SolidWorks. command. That's right. Yeah. So just a different name, but same exact thing. So I think now it's time to add this far lead frame to the assembly. So we can go ahead and do that. And this will be as simple as dragging and dropping from the design manager right into the other assembly and just inserting it as a component. Now we need to get this into place with uh, some of those mates that are really easy to add, but you know, seems as how uh, seems as though we've already kind of uh, seen this, you know, once or twice in this session. We'll just go ahead and kind of fast forward a little bit. But uh, yeah, we're looking looking pretty good here. Yeah. So I think I need a hole though. I yeah, do I need a hole yeah, I don't to see attach to this thing, right? It's not just gonna like magically hold itself in place. Um, and you know what? Shoot, we kind of forgot that. Um, you know, and the thing is, I, I've been in several situations where you're like, oh man, like I should have added this a long time ago, but it doesn't matter because you have the rollback bar, right? So it's, right. you could just add any feature you want right in the middle of the design. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to do. But we're not going to just draw a circle. We're actually just going to reuse and convert entities for an existing uh, hole that already exists in the actual yellow frame and just blow a hole through the far lead or the fair lead. Wow. So it sounds like you really don't have much original geometry in this in this frame then, right? It, it's pretty no, it's much like, all driven. It's all driven. I mean, and that's great because that's great for updating downstream. That's great to make sure these holes line up. I mean, imagine if I had like had to go and define a sketch where I'd want that circle to be. I mean, I just have a greater chance of getting that wrong. But, uh, you know, if you remember correctly, that Eric does have a, a, a different task to do, right? Um, well, I think we want to probably get that to the other side first, right? Well, yeah, of course. We just roll back the rollback <laughs> bar, and boom, there it is, located on the other side. And again, that nice. that comes down to design intent. Beautiful. But yeah, so I guess I'm getting ahead next? of myself here. But uh, you know, what use would it be if you couldn't export this um, and send this to sheet metal manufacturers to get some quotes, right? If you didn't want to do your sheet metal in house, well, luckily you can. There's the export DXF option in 3D Sheet Metal Creator. So that's exactly what Eric's going to do. And you can actually save this directly to your hard drive, or you can put it in 3D Drive, um, which is basically just a generic storage app on the 3D Experience platform. 
uh, let's just use 3D Drive so we could just keep it all in the same place. I could pull up my side panel here and you could see that it shows right up. Wait, now, Gian, John, I know you might I... be wondering, what's the benefit? Like, yeah. why would we want to do this? Well, what I can do, I could actually activate an external sharing link so I can actually share it with, um, with manufacturers and I could copy this link and anyone with the link can literally view this and they have options to do markups and um, basically it's pretty easy to get signed up too if you don't have a 3D experience ID because that's all you need to do to view this. It takes less than 30 seconds to make and then they can see everything on their end and this is what it'll look like. Here's a nice preview window and they can again mark it up, download it, print it, yeah. you know send it back I mean, exactly that makes sense yeah i was gonna ask why you didn't just download the dxf and send it in an email but i guess this makes uh, like for less duplication of of documents yeah i know why not let the manufacturer have a little fun too right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh what's next for this for us though yeah i know i'm getting a little sidetracked i'll, I'll go back to eric now um you know so one of the things he needs to do is actually just copy this DXF and just like add it right into the task as a deliverable. So that's that's what he's going to do. And just like everything else, pretty much, it's just a simple drag and drop. And he could save it. And then what he's going to do is just drag and drop this into completed because he's completed one of his two tasks. So Sweet. I think he's got one more, right? That one assembly. more. He's got one more task. So the task itself is actually to complete this entire assembly and, and add that as a as a deliverable to the task. Oh, but wait, wasn't there was something cool you wanted to show first? And oh time, yeah, right, I forgot. Yeah, but first here, let me um let me hide let me hide some uh, plain sketches, hidden lines. We clean up the model a little bit, you know, do shading uh, with smooth edges here, and you know, here's some new. Realistic environments, again, this is new to the latest release of X-Design, so Dark Mirror sounds like your Netflix show that you've been watching. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe, you know. maybe a little less grim than that. But. Yeah, <laughs> I would say, yeah, usually. This one looks actually That's kind of cool. nice. It, I like the shading on this yeah. one. This one's actually my favorite, and if you don't want to hurt your eyes, this one's the good one to use. But there's <laughs> several others. I mean, I could keep going here. Here's the studio view. It's White Mirror. Um, here is an outdoor view. I mean, road, uh, city. I mean, do I do I need to go on indoor? I mean, yeah, that's pretty cool. But all right, let's let's get this thing done, man. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right, let's finish this thing. So once again, we could just drag and drop from the design manager into the new tab onto our task and add this as a deliverable. And just like that, the most satisfying part of the demonstration is when you can drag something from in work to completed and boom with that i think that's it for eric engineer and i think it's a great time that we uh check the chat great time to check the chat what do you say yeah let's do it so uh, i see eric still in here and he was just saying a, a semi-secret x sheet metal tip if you need a dxf from uh for your omax water jet or hypotherm plasma of a planar face from a non sheet metal model, you can just bring, you can open that X design part in X sheet metal to extract it. Oh, which is pretty cool. Wow. So really it, it, so it sounds like X sheet metal gives you the option to really turn any face into uh, into a DXF, which is very powerful to be able That's to awesome. do. That's awesome. And yeah, it looks like um, M Naveen Kumar asked how we can download the software. And we actually do have a free trial of 3D Creator and 3D Sculptor that you can access by going to solidworks.com slash 3D experience dash online dash trial. But we'll make sure we add a link um, right in the chat there for you, uh, as well as to the description in YouTube. Uh, but I think that I think that that's just about it. And uh, I think we can probably close us out, do a little yeah. high level overview. Bring us home, Gian. All right. Well, you saw today 3D Creator. 3D Sculptor, and 3D Sheet Metal Creator. And you got to see a, a whole host of various topics. So both top-down and bottom-up assemblies. We saw some in-context part design. 
you know, we saw sheet metal part design. We saw industrial design with sub D modeling. So if you're, if you're interested and you want to learn more, you can always click the link in the description. We actually have a whole host of links in there pointing you to different places, depending on what you're looking for. And always special thanks to Sarah Zuckerman, who's here with us on every single session, making sure things run smoothly for us on the back end, as well as Jordan Tadic, who was the star of our last episode. And now he's also helping us on the back end uh, for this episode. So it was great to have him as well. Th special thanks to both of you guys. Really appreciate all your hard work. And yeah, if you're if you liked what you saw, tune in again on May 27th. Uh, 2021. So, you know, another four weeks from today at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And for those of you who've been asking us about simulation, well, we're finally delivering. So the next the next episode, we're going to have special guests from Simulia, um, which is our one of our other one of our other brands here, a part of Dasso Systems. Simulia focuses strictly on simulation. So we're going to have a few special guests join us to cover everything simulation from structures to plastics to fluids and more. So if you're interested in simulation, you're not going to want to miss that one. Oh, and yeah, I think that uh, we just had one other thing to mention. So as we mentioned in the beginning, we, we do these live streams every Thursday now at the same time. So I just wanted to mention that next week, we're going to have SOLIDWORKS Live Design back, and Michael Steves is going to be the star of that. And, and Michael Steves does a lot of really cool work with simulation. He's been on our show a couple yes, times. Yes, he has. Uh, but he's going to be running the show to show us how you can recognize fatigue and how to fight it. So that's going to be a really cool session. So a lot of simulation coming up. So if you're interested in simulation, here's the place to be. And uh, that's actually going to be hosted by Andrew Gross. So Andrew's uh, another guy who's who's all over these streams. Always, and if you don't see him in the stream, chances are he's helping out on the back end. So really excited to see new hosts of SolidWorks Live Design. I got to do it once. And then I think we saw um, Michael Steves was the host. And now he's the presenter. Now Andrew gets the host. It's just cool. We get a lot of new faces yeah. up here all the time. But I digress. Thank you again for joining today, and we can't wait to see you next time.